Well, it's Monday, the 11th of June 2018, and this is your EV News Daily. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. In fact, wherever you're listening around the world, a very warm welcome from London in the UK. Here is today's news about electric cars and the future of transport. My name is Martin Lee. And I go through every EV article online, so you don't have to. Well, this is show 147, this Thursday being show 150. You know I like a round number. Anything that you'd like to hear done differently, more or less of, to add or improve, let me know. You can tweet EV News Daily or email. It's hello at evnewsdaily.com. That email address is hello at evnewsdaily.com. Well, we can't start the podcast today without a massive congratulations uh, to what has been certainly the biggest electric car event that I can ever remember in this country. And clearly there's big events happening all around the world, but hopefully the start of something very, very special. Uh, Congratulations to Robert Llewellyn and the Fully Charged team for organising Fully Charged Live over Saturday and Sunday. Uh, They had some lovely weather. I mean, it's June in the UK, so you're hoping it's going to be okay weather could easily have rained lots of outdoor areas 50 over 50 electric cars to look at and there's just so many so many details of the weekend the the 16 different live sessions the fact that people were sitting in the aisles all of the different exhibitors that came along from people who provide products and services for electric car enthusiasts or the fact that over half the people that attended Fully Charged Live don't yet own an electric or hybrid or an electrified car, but they want to and they want to find out more uh, to the sheer brilliance of the organisation, the, the the confidence, the investment. You have no idea. I used to work in putting on uh, big events uh, in the media industry and um, it it's slightly stressful uh, when you plan for months something that lasts hours. Uh, in my case, it was big pop music events and Everything from it being windy and rainy on the day to health and safety and that fence is in the wrong place and I can't... There's a million more things uh, that cause you a headache and a stress uh, if you organise events. And I I don't envy what they've done, but I massively admire it, by the way. Uh, I did hear some interesting stats that I heard. They sold... We're hoping to sell 5,000 tickets in advance. They sold 1,000 tickets in one day once it started trending on Twitter and people started hearing about this thing. So I think Sunday was, yesterday was just as big um, uh, as Saturday. Even down to the army of volunteers, 50 Tesla and Renault owners. Uh, because the car park at Silverstone, uh, the uh, the F1 circuit, if you didn't know where it was, because the car park was a little distance away, a whole fleet of people gave up their time and their cars and they ferried people from the car parks, as well as there being buses and shuttle buses, the kind of thing you can imagine they would do. Also, just private EV owners saying, I'll take people from the car park and run them up to the the big facility where it was being held, Just and, and so many more little cases like that. Of course, congratulations to Robert Llewellyn for building his channel over the last eight years and having that um, that foresight to, to do it and the confidence to do it, and having, as as I said, have some insight into organising these big events. Congratulations also to the army of people who, behind the scenes, everybody from organising the the stage look great, the big screens, the sound, ensuring it's all filmed. People are currently beavering away to get it all online, so people who couldn't make it all around the world, he has 300,000 subscribers to his channel, uh, can see it. A huge well done. Here's to next year, eh? Well, congratulations as well to Formula E over the weekend. No spoilers, no spoilers if you are still to watch the Formula E race. And, uh, you know, it's been everywhere on social media and in the news. So there is an argument to say I should just say who won. But I won't because it's happened to me before. And I'm like, oh, no, I was waiting to watch that. Uh, So no spoilers. But circuit racing returned to Switzerland as the ABV FIA Formula E Championship raced through the city streets and lakefront boulevards of Zurich, the host city of the 2018 Zurich E Prix, it was, pick my words carefully, Carnage, the championship battle, had a twist and a turn, I won't say any more, overtakes, controversies, penalties, and I won't mention the winners of the race or the championship for a day or so yet, until you are still catching up, it's because, I don't want to spoil it for you, it was a big race, but also a big race for Switzerland as well, no motor racing there for, um, there's there's bits and they, you know, they like a good hill climb there, but uh, it's been 60 years after the uh, terrible motor racing accident uh, all that time ago, and it's fascinating to see them open to electric racing. 
Well, let's get into the news uh, for a brand new week then. Welcome to a new week. Hopefully you had a great weekend. Uh, thank you for tuning in today to the, the program. Elon Musk has revealed that Autopilot version 9 should arrive in August. And Tesla will begin to enable, that's the phrase, begin to enable the full autonomous driving features with that release. The company is rightly focused on uh, safety. Uh, with previous versions, Musk said, but now it's time to spread its wings. This is all according to John Fingus at Engadget. However, the full self-driving capability package should actually mean that something, uh, some, it should mean something once Autopilot 9 arrives and the more advanced features start to kick in. Uh, there may be some situations where, with the advanced Autopilot, it is genuinely acceptable to take your hands off the wheel even if that is low speed, parking lots, private spaces, things like that. The important thing to remember here is that whilst there are big news events going on and investigations into the handful of crashes uh, that there have been, and all of those need to be properly looked into, obviously they do, but they're working so hard behind the, uh, the scenes on the uh, development side, uh, the coders at Tesla. Uh, they're making big strides forward, even if it seems like you want them now, but you know, it's got to wait another couple of months, but they will get there. Well, inside EVs always have their eyes on the sales prize, and Mark Kane says that plug-in electric car sales in Norway increased in May and now exceed the cumulative level of 200,000 new registrations since 2012. And Norway is a microcosm of the electric car industry. Now, okay, there are some incentives and some different things at play because of the taxes on non-EVs, and so there is a big financial incentive to choose an electric car. Also, it's a very small market, so the numbers are very small. But like I say, it's a bit of a microcosm for other markets, so we do pay lots of attention to Norway. The best-selling car, says Mark, in Norway this year is the Nissan Leaf, which uh, took the lead after a spectacular registration of over 2,000 in March. Since then, it's dialed back a bit uh, to three-digit numbers, 997 in April, 644 last month in May. That is a bit low. Uh, during the first five months of 2018, Tesla significantly increased its sales in Norway. We are talking both the Model S and the Model X. Uh, you can read more about that on Inside EVs as they're always looking at those sales figures and making sense of the story as well. That's what I love, not just the raw numbers, but they put it in context as well. Well, last year, in 2017, Google and VW announced their plans to work together to use new machine learning processes and projects to advance AI, artificial intelligence. Now, got some more news. It comes via Chris Randall at Electrive regarding custom batteries. He says the VW announced uh, that they had first succeeded in simulating the structure of industry-relevant molecules on a quantum computer. This is blowing my mind right now, so I'm trying to get my head around it. Now, it's a simulation, and the simulation is relevant for the development of more powerful batteries, particularly in the area of EV batteries. Long term, he says, the partners plan to be able to simulate the entire chemical process of a whole battery on that quantum computer. Now, the goal is to develop a tailor-made battery, a configurable blueprint ready for production. The simulation requires particularly powerful computing. So they are making big strides in battery production, not by a bunch of white coats in the lab, but on quantum computers and simulating it first before they go into the lab and start making the real thing. Fascinating. We always give Panasonic and Tesla a ton of credit, rightly so, for advancing batteries. But this uh, little bit of news coming out from VW's partnership with Google and working together on AI. Well, let's go to India next. And Tata Motors has revealed its future range of EVs under the... Well, there's two of them. There's the Alpha and the Omega platforms. Uh, their target range is three to 400 uh, kilometers, not miles, <laughs> but kilometers per charge, uh, says Kartok. Uh, the Indian automaker currently sells a uh, just a single electric car. That's the Tiger Electric. Uh, the um, Indian government buy that one. Soon, it's going to have a little sibling, little hatchback sibling, the Tiago Electric. It's going to go on sale in India for private car buyers as well. However, the range of the Tiger and the Tiago, it's 100 to 120 Ks, if you're lucky. Uh, the Tata Motors plans, though, are a stopgap, really. They've got their eyes on the two new platforms they're developing, Alpha and Amiga. Uh, they're expected to have a range of three to 400 uh, Ks per charge and running on 320-volt batteries. 
Um, the fast charging option is going to be standard, and they're catching up in India as well. I mean, don't forget, we talk about China a lot. The Indian market is just huge, and some very, very uh, forward-thinking, switched-on businesses there as well. Uh, America, uh, North America, Northern Europe, China getting loads of headlines. Just watch out for India. Well, back here in the UK and London's mayor, he's called Sadiq Khan. Well, last week he confirmed the ultra-low emission zone, the um, the ULES. <laughs> it's to be great, it's catchy, isn't it? It's to be growing larger than previously announced. It's now going to reach the north and south circular roads. And if you know London, that's a big area now. Uh, not until, though, October 2021. Can you imagine how many cars, how many EVs we're going to see on the roads in October 2021? It's going to be so good. Every, like, every so many cars are going to be an EV. Um, though For now, though, the zone's limited to central London, and that goes into effect in April next year. Now, if you drive into the zone next year that is uh, when it starts when it launches and your car doesn't comply it's a 12 pound 50 a day charge to enter the ULES. At the moment, you can drive into town at the weekends and bank holidays, and you don't face the existing congestion charge. Now, that's done a, a good job at, at keeping some traffic away from the very centre of London, but also uh, makes some money as well for the city. Uh, but the ultra-low emission zone fees are going to be 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Particularly harsh on diesels, by the way. Uh, if it's not a Euro 6 diesel or newer, then it's going to be penalised. A bit, a little bit better for petrol and gas. Uh, it's only Euro 4 and newer, by the way. The office of the mayor uh, it says it will remove the dirtiest, most polluting vehicles, affecting 100,000 cars, 35,000 vans and 3,000 lorries every single day. And if you drive into London, uh, as I do occasionally, I'm normally on the electric train, but if you do drive in, as I do sometimes, you'll see all the cameras, uh, the number plate recognition cameras above all the roads ready for the ultra low emission zones well one more story and we move uh, from tarmac to the sea and stena line is a big ferry company here in europe they've got 38 vessels they do 21 routes in northern europe and green car congress has the full details on stena line recently signing a deal with kallenberg technology group uh, the, the deal to start with is one megawatt hour of batteries, which they put on the Stena Jutlandica, which we've talked about before. It operates between Gothenburg and Frederick Schaven. I think that's how you say it. Uh, we've mentioned that the plans were coming, and now it's moved on with the signing of this contract. Stena Line envisions three phases to the project. So phase one, due this summer. So we're, we're there now. One megawatt hour, a 3,000 kilowatt battery pack. Um, it's going to be located on the weather deck, actually. It's going to be used for things like bow thrusters and manoeuvring when in port. Then there's going to be step two. That is to install a 20 megawatt hour battery pack uh, connected to the propellers. Uh, the Stena Jutlandica will be able to uh, be operated on electric uh, electricity alone uh, within 10 miles, equal to the distance of, say, um, uh, Gothenburg and the Winger Lighthouse. They say step three, that's the biggie. The battery capacity will be expanded to 50 megawatt hours of storage, enabling 50 nautical miles of travel. And I've talked to him before on the podcast about my own personal dilemma. We're heading out later this year onto a cruise on uh, the Independence of the Seas. That's one of these mega, mega, mega ones, like four or 6,000 people or something. And I know it's going to be running on dirty heavy diesel and we put off taking a cruise for a very long time but in the end we said okay let's go on the let's go on the cruise let's see what what it's like um and, and let's assess for myself uh, what it feels like to be on one of those big boats which they say uh, all these big cruise lines say they're making big strides in reducing the emissions and the the pollutants but certainly i'm still still pretty torn about what we're doing but we've booked it and we'll see. Well, thank you so much for listening today. And if you went to Fully Charged over the weekend, hopefully you had a fantastic weekend uh, and it's all back to normal, back to work this week. I'd love to spread the word about electric cars. If you can share this with somebody who might be interested, please do. Every previous show is on uh, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, TuneIn, Stitcher. Uh, it's now on SoundCloud and the blog, which is 
evnewsdaily.com, a little WordPress blog. I put everything on there, and I will try and transcribe it as well. Uh, some days we uh, auto-transcribe it, and some days it's the show notes go up there, but there's stuff to read as well as listen to on each, each show. Uh, if you subscribe, though, however you do it, even if it's YouTube or, or a podcast, uh, you get uh, the audio every day first and free and automatically. And if you want to catch up online on the socials, search EV News Daily. Have a great day today, and I'll catch you tomorrow.